milling machine head, and removal tools. The drawing files will also be uploaded. Disclaimer. What's going on? So today what we're going to do is we're going to take this head off of the mill and we're going to take it up to the workshop and uh, do a few repairs. Uh, the problems with this thing is a little rattly in the top. Um, the, uh, the quill feed isn't engaging and uh, the high-low isn't properly going on the full range. So there's a few problems adding up in this mill. So uh, how I'm going to pick it off is I've made up a, a picking bar that goes through the draw bar and I'm going to use the, uh, the shop crane and I'm going to lift it off, put it on the cart and take it upstairs. I've had everything uh, installed with twist locks because we're a school and I need to work on the machines while the students are working on the neighboring machines. So instead of having a, a circuit for every single machine, a circuit breaker for every single machine, uh, what we decided to go with was uh, with twist locks so I can isolate each machine without shutting down the whole shop. Okay, so we removed the bolts in the front. Yep, I have one nut just holding it still. So now I'm gonna lock down this strap to keep sort of put a triangle on it. It's basically floating already. This uh, this drawbar that I made up to go through the spindle is like is a very nice tool to have. And pick up the washers. I'm going to pull this, um, pull this crane slowly back. Uh, careful. Okay, we're floating. And that's how you take the head off of the milling machine. Let's take a moment to talk about the head tilting gear. Okay, so what we have is a part. I can explain to you how we adjust the head left or right for alignment. So if you look in the back of the head, you can see that there's a there's a worm gear that's adjusted by the hex shaft. If you see that if I adjust the hex shaft, that this worm rotates. Now what this worm is doing is it's crawling on this gear here. Um, and one of the flaws of this machine or one of the often maintenance issues with this machine is that these screws come loose from vibration or what have you. So whenever I have these apart, I take them apart clean them up, and then I put it back together with red Loctite so that these don't vibrate loose in the future. So, um, Also, while I have it apart, I inspect the condition of the gear. And if I rotate it, I can get new life in this gear because these teeth on the bottom side never get used. So um, I can reuse this gear. How old is this machine? This machine is six years old. And it's never been taken apart? This, this is the first time I've, been t I've taken this one apart. Okay, excellent. Here's a, a better look at my, my lifting bar. So what I did is I just took a piece of threaded rod and I made a couple of aluminum plates on the top and bottom so that I don't mar the, uh, the spindle nose. And I drop this down through the spindle. I take the draw bar out and drop this down through the spindle, tighten it up, and then I use a lifting hook and it lifts the head off the machine just beautifully. So uh, that's, that's how that works. Then what I did is I, um, I brought it to up to the shop. The, the workshop is detached from the machine shop. So there's a little bit of transportation involved. So what I did was I, I made a, um, a table mount for the milling machine heads and I just bolted it to the, the top of my table. And I use a beam trolley and a chain fall and then I just lower it right into place, bolt it onto the mount and then I have my milling machine head here in the workshop on the table to work in a nice environment, uh, nice and level. It's not on a table. It's not laying outside on a bench or anything. It's, it's, uh, it's a perfect conditions for working. Now what I'm going to do on this project is there's a little bit of uh, noise in the top end, which could be that the, the speed adjuster plate may be warped or the belt could be worn and it's just uh, uh, time for some maintenance up in the top end. But there's also a few other problems. So the high-low 
the high low won't go into both gears. So how the high low works is there's a, a pulley in this housing here and it, it raises and lowers and there's something obstructing it from its full range. So I have to take it apart and see what's broken or what's jammed, what's obstructing that motion. Also with this, um, this machine is the quill feeds not working. So something in here, this is the engage and disengage lever on the quill feed. Um, it's not transmitting power from the spindle uh, over to the, the quill feed assembly. So I have to take this mill apart right down to, right down to the, the, uh, the split here and see what's not engaging. I don't know if a key fell out or something's happened, something's not transmitting power. It is a bit of a complex powertrain, but something is broken in the chain. So, uh, and I don't mean chain in the, in the literal sense. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it apart in my nice clean environment and I'm going to look for uh, a spit key or something broken or something jammed and I'm gonna rectify all these problems. Uh, how many hours do you think approximately? It's hard to tell, right, with classes? It's hard to tell. Um, there's probably about 500 hours on this machine, but that's, uh, that's kind of hard hours because we have students that are on these machines that are learning and they just don't have the finesse that, uh, that a seasoned machinist would have. So, you know, these, these mills and they, they, they pay the price. The, if I flip it over, you can see that it's smashed and the chip came out of here and then fell down into the seat and prevented the, the bowl low from- Oh, from, so this chunk here that's pointing out, that's part of that. That's correct. So this sits, this sits here. And then what this does is this powers the, the quill feed. The quill feed takes its power off the turning spindle and then it pulls a worm off of the spindle and then transfers power down to the quill feed. It's a pretty ingenious little setup, very simple, old school. Um, but now what I have to do is I have to make a parts list and replace these parts and uh, then I can clean everything up and reassemble. So, so I, I, f I feel great that I found the broken parts uh, because that answers a lot of questions. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, I'm gonna sit down with the manual. I'm gonna make a list of parts. I'm going to call the uh, supplier and I'm gonna get these parts overnighted to me. I'm gonna start cleaning everything up and I'm gonna go for reassembly and it probably two days time, I'll be able to reassemble and put this back into service. Okay, how about some of this other stuff? Is there any other problems with anything else that's in here? Well, it's all related. It's all related? It's okay. all related, man. Okie dokie, wow, there's a lot of stuff. What do you think? Yeah. Okay, and that's it free. So now it's, it's suspended from the chain and I'm gonna take the, uh, the bolts out. So now it's free to be loaded onto a cart, brought downstairs in the elevator, and put back on the machine. And this guy's clamped onto the table here. Yeah, I just uh, I just drilled and uh, tapped the the tabletop. So this mount will stay on there. If I need to use the whole table, I can just run a couple of bolts out. I've got a flat table surface. Uh, this is an ideal setup for me. I'm going to be uploading the SolidWorks files. The link will be in the description. Uh, there's only a... Okay, before we end this video, I have to give Andrew Spencer all the credit for this. He designed this, he came up with the idea, and he implemented everything. And he was nice enough to share this in a video with everybody. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. If you got any value out of this, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below.